Welcome everyone. Um, welcome to TITEC Consults um, and welcome to the Risk Management Framework Training presented by TITEC Consulting. Uh, my name is Emmanuel Cyprian. I'm the lead instructor in TITEC Consulting. Today we shall be looking at the second step of the Risk Management Framework which is selection of security control. So let us go into this you know, briefly and see what do we need to learn in this um, second step of this risk management framework. Yeah, in this step, we shall be looking at what are security controls? Why are organizations required to select security controls? What is the select process? Security control families and classes. Security control baselines for high, moderate, and low systems. Who is responsible for selecting security controls? Taxed under the select step. SDLC faces for each task. NIST SP 853 revision four. And lastly, RMF next step. Now, what are security controls? Security controls are the management, operational, and technical safeguards or countermeasures employed within an organizational information system to protect the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of the system and its information. Selecting the appropriate set of security controls helps to achieve the objective of conducting the day-to-day -day operations of the organization and accomplishing the organization's stated mission and business functions with what the OMB Circular A130 defines as adequate security controls or security commensurate with risk resulting from the unauthorized access, use, disclosure, disruption, modification, or destruction of information. In essence, what, we, what this slide is saying is security controls are the countermeasures are the safeguard that we employ, that we deploy into an information system that helps us to protect the confidentiality of that system, the integrity of the data in those system, and the availability of the system and the information. For example, you password your phone. The password on your phone is helping to protect the confidentiality of the data inside the phone. The password is also helping to protect the integrity of the data you stored in the phone. And the password is equally helping to protect you know, helping to at least protect the availability of the information of that phone and the data inside the phone. So that is an example of security control. Why are organizations required to select security controls? Now, organizations are required to adequately mitigate risk arising from use of information and information system in the execution of mission and business functions. Now, a significant challenge for organization is to determine the appropriate set of security controls, which if implemented and determined to be effective, will most cost effectively mitigate risk while complying with the security requirements defined by applicable federal laws, executive orders, directive, policies, standards, or regulations. Selecting the appropriate set of security controls is adequate to adequately mitigate risk by meeting the specific and sometimes unique security requirement of an organization is an important task, a task that clearly demonstrates the organization's commitment to security and due diligence exercise in protecting the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of organizational information and information system. In essence, what are we saying here? The organizations are required to adequately mitigate risk arising from the use of information and information system. That is based on the kind of system you operate, the kind of business you operate, your mission, your objective. Now, there will always be risk attached to those kind of functions, those kind of objective, those kind of you know, operations. Now, organizations are required to mitigate those risks. And how do you mitigate those risks? by selecting appropriate security controls. What is the select process? Security controls. 
Security controls are selected based on the security categorization of the information system. and requirement for the organization's specific environment of operations. The security control selection process include one, choosing a set of baseline security controls. Two, tailoring the baseline security controls by applying scoping, parameterization, and compensating control guidelines, guidance. Three, supplementing the tailored baseline security controls if necessary with additional controls or control enhancement to address unique organizational needs based on risk assessment and local conditions. Four, specify minimum assurance requirement as appropriate. The selection of initial set of baseline security controls is based on the impact level of the information system as determined by the security categorization process. Now, the organization select one or three set of baseline security controls from NIST 853A, Appendix D, corresponding to the low, moderate, or high impact rating of the information system. What are we saying here? It says that in selection of security controls, you follow three steps. One, you're choosing a set of baseline security controls. How do you choose the set of baseline security controls? That is being determined by the categorization that was done at the first step of the risk management framework. If you categorize your system as moderate, high, or low system, that is the baseline upon which you go to select the uh, recommended security control. Two, tailoring of the baseline security control. It means that, for example, according to NIST 853 revision four, if you categorize your system as a moderate system, there are minimum of 260 security controls that is recommended by NIST for that system. Now, tailoring means you're not going to implement all those 260 security controls. You might not implement them. Why? Because not all those controls might be applicable in your environment. That is tailoring. Now, after you have done tailoring, there might be the need for enhancement. When you say enhancement, it means additional layer of security added to the tailored security control. And fourthly, you need to specify at least an assurance level that these security controls will be adequate enough to secure the information and information system. Security control families and classes. According to NIST 853 revision four, there are 18 security control families and divided into three classes, management, operational and technical security control classes. Now, these are the security controls according to this NIST publication, 18 control families. We have the access controls, we have the awareness and training, audit and accountability, security assessment and authorization, configuration management, contingency planning, identification and authentication, incidents response, maintenance, media protection, physical and environmental protection, planning, personnel security, risk assessment, system and service acquisition, system and communication protection, system and information integrity, and lastly, program management. Security control baseline for high, moderate, and low systems. Now, according to NIST 853, revision four, appendix D, now it gives us, uh, contains the security control baseline that represent the starting point in determining the security control for low impact, moderate impact, and high impact information system. If you look at the uh, diagram, the table in this slide, you'll see that we have the control numbers, the control name, the priority, the initial control baseline. Now under the initial control baseline, you can see low, moderate, and high. That represents the categorization of your system. What the control, what this means is if your system is categorized as low or moderate or high, AC1 is recommended that you select AC1, and AC1 is access control policy and procedure. If your system is categorized as moderate, as low, or as a high system, 
It is also recommended that you select AC2, which is account management. As you can see here, AC2 is uh, applicable to low system. AC2 is applicable to moderate system. AC2 is applicable to high system. Now, you might be wondering, what are these in parentheses? They are called control enhancement, which simply means if your system is categorized as moderate or high system, you need to add additional layer of security to AC2. That is why we have, if your system is categorized as moderate, you need additional four enhancement to AC2. If your system is categorized as high, you need additional eight security control enhancement added to AC2, and so on and so forth. So this is um, in page 109 of NIST 853 revision 4. And this is in page 117 of NIST 853 revision 4. So that is what we have here. You see the ones that is in enhancement, you can see their names here. You know, AC2 enhancement one is account management. And what is account? What is that? Automated system account management. You can see here that if your system is categorized as moderate or high, you select AC2 enhancement one. If your system is categorized as moderate or high, you select AC2 enhancement two. What is AC2 enhancement two? Removal of temporary or emergency accounts. So that is how you select the security controls for whichever categorization you have for your system. Who is responsible for selecting the security controls? The information system owner and the information security architect are responsible for selecting the security controls for the information system and documenting the controls in the system security plan, SSP. The information system owner, in conjunction with the information system security officer, ISSO, is also responsible for development and maintenance of the system security plan and ensures that the system is deployed and operated in accordance with the agreed upon security controls. Now let's look at a task under the select step. There are four tasks under the select step. The first task is common control identification. What this task is saying is you identify the security controls that are provided by the organization as common control for the organization's information system and document those controls in the system security plan. Who is responsible for this particular task? Chief information officer or senior information security officer, information security architect, common control provider. What is the SDLC phase for this particular task number one? Initiation phase, and it means concept and requirement definition. And these are the, uh, what's it called, the, the, the NIST guidance publication, FIPS 199, FIPS 200, NIST 830, NIST 853, revision 4. Let's look at the second task. The second task is security control selection. Now, this task is saying that you select the security controls for the information system and document the controls in the system security plan, SSP. Who is responsible for this selection? Information security architect, information system owner. What is the SDLC phase? Initiation phase. These are the NIST guidance, FIPS 199, FIPS 200, NIST 830, NIST 853, revision 4. Tax number three, it says monitoring strategy. This tax is saying that you develop a strategy for continuous monitoring of the security control effectiveness and any proposal actual changes to the information system and its environment of operation. What does it mean? It says the fact that you have selected a security control you shouldn't leave it that way. There should be a strategy for you to effectively monitor the effectiveness of those controls to ensure that they are still operating, you know, and working as intended. Who is responsible for this? Information system owner or the common control provider. The SDLC phase is initiation phase, and the NIST guidance is NIST 830, NIST 839, NIST 853, revision 4, and NIST 853A, revision 4. The number four task is system security plan approval. It says review and approve the SSP. So it is at this task that is where the SSP is approved. Who is responsible for approving the SSP 
authorizing official or his designated representative. Now, what is the NIST guidance for developing uh, SSP? NIST SP 800-18. The SDLC phase here, you can see that it's different from the first three tasks that we've just mentioned. The SDLC phase here is development or acquisition phase. So that is it for uh, the selection of security control. The next step will be for us to implement the security control. But while we are with that, um, I urge you guys to please um, subscribe to my video, uh, share this video, and then you can reach out to me for mentoring, for coaching, for training. I organize training. You know, I have a flexible schedule. I organize training on Saturdays. I organize training weekdays, you know, evening classes. And my trainings are short, you know, short duration. Within seven weeks, you are done with this entire risk management framework with intense hands-on. And package, you know, the, the, my training prepares you for the job and it also prepares you for the CAP certification. Yeah, you can reach out to me. My website is below this, uh, this video. And I um, hope to see you next time. Now, and I'll keep an eye for the next video, which is Implement Security Control. Thank you.